Well, we had another great week in Acts. We're getting really close to wrapping Acts up. In fact, next week, we've only got two days of Acts before we're finished. And that was me saying Acts a lot in the first few sentences. So let's summarize these things from this book written by Luke. See how I did that there. Uh, Episode 281, we talked about Paul and Barnabas at Iconium. This was the first missionary journey. This is when they were preaching the first time. Paul and Barnabas were still close buddies at this point. And this is where the people said, oh man, these guys are the very gods that have come down. They healed a guy that had been crippled his whole life. And so they they say that Barnabas is Zeus. They say that Paul is Hermes. They want to bring offerings to them and make offerings to them. And Paul tells them, no, this is who we are. We're of God. We're of Christ. He explains to them Jesus. And even with that, they still will not make offerings to them. But he is also, Paul's preaching is so opposed that there are Jews who are jealous from Antioch and Iconium, not the Antioch, that's their their home base, remember, a different Antioch. And they rouse the crowd to stone Paul and leave him for dead. But he ends up uh, getting back up and going back into the city to preach. Now, Paul and Barnabas make it back home. They tell everybody there of how the Gentiles are coming to faith. And in Acts 15, episode 282, we see that some people have come up from Jerusalem or down from Jerusalem, according to the text. And they, they came up saying, look, we're glad that the Gentiles are putting their faith in Christ, but unless they are also circumcised, they cannot be saved. And so the elders of Antioch tell Paul and Barnabas, they're like, look, we need you to go down and we need you to go to Jerusalem and talk to the elders there, talk to the apostles there and see uh, what the deal is. And so Paul and Barnabas show up and they say, look, a lot of Gentiles are coming to faith and we are being taught now that we're being taught that they need to be circumcised to be saved. And he says, he says it this way in Galatians, that he wanted to make sure that he hadn't preached in vain, that he wasn't preaching something false by telling them you don't have to be circumcised. So the elders meet together. There's a large, a large debate. Peter is the one that says, you, you saw that how in the early days God made the choice among you that the Gentiles would hear the gospel and that they would believe. You saw that there is no distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles, that they received the Holy Spirit like we received the Holy Spirit. It was by faith for them, just like it's by faith for us. Why are you trying to place a yoke on these Gentile believers that our fathers couldn't bear up under and we couldn't bear up under? And we talked about how that's similar to Matthew 11 and Matthew 23. The entire assembly falls silent. James gets up, um, presumably James, the brother of Jesus, not the brother of John, gets up. He speaks about all these things as well. And he talks about, he even quotes Amos, and talks about how the Gentiles have always been destined for the gospel, always been destined to be people of faith. And he says, therefore, I think that it would be good if we tell them, abstain from meat with blood in it, abstain from sexual immorality, abstain from worshiping idols, abstain from things that are strangled. Other than that, they're good. Let them, let them be. And so they write this letter to send to the, to the Gentiles, particularly in Antioch. It gets shared along the way, but particularly in Antioch to uh, encourage the people there. And so Paul and Barnabas return along with Judas and Silas and they speak to the people and they tell everybody, hey, look, we just want you to know everything's okay. You're fine. You don't have to be circumcised to be saved. And then Paul and Barnabas have a disagreement. Uh, They wanted to go back and visit the places they had preached at in their first missionary journey. Barnabas wants to take John Mark. Paul doesn't. So Barnabas and John Mark depart and then Paul and Silas depart. And then in trip chapter or trip trip Two, uh, in chapter 16 of Acts, Paul and Silas begin their second missionary journey or their first together. And Paul wants to go to Asia, but God prevents him from going to Asia. And it says here in verse six that he is called by the spirit to go to Macedonia. And so Paul and Silas go to Macedonia. They get beaten and they get thrown in prison and they, they're beaten with rods. They're thrown in prison. And while there in, in Acts 16, one of the, one of the, in my, in my estimation, one of the most poignant, powerful stories of what it looks like just to, to love Jesus more than the circumstances of your life. So they're beaten, they're chained in prison, their feet are in the stocks. And what are they doing? They're about midnight. They're still singing hymns to God and they're worshiping God and the chains fall off their feet. The doors spring open. And then God uses this to not just deliver them because they were delivered the next day, but 
God uses this for the jailer who, who is keeping guard over them. He comes to salvation that night. He comes in and he sees Paul and Silas there. And he says, what do I need to do to be saved? And they tell him. And then he takes them home and he bandages their wounds. And he takes care of their wounds. And his entire family gets saved. And his fi- entire family comes to know the Lord. And then we kept going. And we were uh, in chapter 17 and 18 where Paul goes into Philippi, Paul goes into Thessalonica, and in Thessalonica, he's hated. And because he's hated there, he flees there. They end up going to Berea, and in Berea, they're preaching the gospel. In Thessalonica, they didn't receive the gospel well. There were some that did. But Paul goes to Berea, and he preaches the gospel there, and it says that they were were more, uh, what does it say? It says that the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians, and they studied the scriptures every day to see if what Paul was saying was true. But then the Jews from, the Thessal- Th- from Thessalonica came and poisoned the crowd against Paul. So Paul flees, he goes to Athens. While in Athens, he's preaching in the synagogue and he's proclaiming Christ. And then from that, he gets invited to speak at the Areopagus and speak about the resurrection from the dead, which he does. And he points them to the truth of Jesus. After that, in chapter 18, Paul heads to Corinth. I don't know if this will help you or not. He heads in chapter 18, Paul heads to Corinth and he's there for 18 months. So there you go. Chapter 18 and he's there for 18 months. And while in Corinth, he is preaching and he's proclaiming to the people. And he's in the synagogue every day. And he's trying to reason with the people. And once they're kind of done hearing him, he goes and he starts testifying in houses. And Silas and Timothy end up joining Paul again there. He becomes friends with Priscilla and Aquila, who are Christians who have fled Rome because they've been ousted from Rome. All the Jews have been. And he preaches Christ. And then he returns to Antioch. Um, to he returns on his way home to Antioch and on the way stops along the coast and drops off Priscilla and Aquila. They go into Ephesus and he tells the Ephesians, I'll come back and visit you if I'm able to, but I can't right now. So Paul starts off on his third missionary journey and he gets to Ephesus. In the meantime, Apollos has left Ephesus and has gone on to Corinth where he's preaching. Paul stays in Ephesus for a total of three years. It was an incredibly challenging time of ministry for him. We know this from a couple of different texts, 1 Corinthians 15 being one of those. And then he heads back over to Macedonia. He's in and around Philippi. He's in and around Thessalonica again. And he wants to go visit Corinth. He's not able to this time. He makes his way back as he's headed back towards uh, Jerusalem because he wants to be there in time for the feast. And sorry for the, uh, oh, I just lost it. So Pentecost, there you go. And he, he stops and he meets with the Ephesians again and tells them, you'll never see my face again. And then where we got to was Paul goes into Jerusalem when he's there. And this is episode 286, Acts 21 and 22. He's in Jerusalem. Some of the believing Jews there say, look, there are people here who want to kill you. There's already been a prophecy that the people wanted to kill him. And so they say, look, you got four guys here who have just finished their vow. Take them to the temple, pay what they owe. And then they'll see that there's nothing to this, that you're actually a Jew, that you're actually following the law. Paul goes into the temple. He ultimately gets called out by some Jews from Asia who are in Jerusalem for Pentecost. They say, this guy's preaching against our people everywhere. He's bringing Gentiles into the temple. He's profaning the law of Moses. And they arrest him and they are ready to put him to death. But he he speaks to the crowd and he's proclaiming to them who Christ is. And he's proclaiming to them the beauty of Jesus. And ultimately, they still decide they want to kill him. And they make a plan to put him to death. But the tribune rescues Paul, sends him with um, 470 soldiers off to Caesarea where he meets Felix the governor. And he proclaims Christ to Felix the governor. And Paul is is recognizing that the Jews, they, they don't want to believe. They're contrary to the things of Christ. And so Paul proclaims the truth of Jesus to Felix the governor And Felix, the governor, keeps hoping that Paul's going to bribe him, that he's going to pay him off. And so Felix requests Paul's company over and over and over again, and they keep having these conversations. And for two years, Paul has conversations with Felix about the gospel. And that's where we've left Paul. We've left him for two years imprisoned. 
Uh, it's a fairly decent situation as far as things go because Felix has said, let his friends come and visit him. Don't keep his friends from him and let them take care of him. So the needs of Paul are being met and he's able to spend some time with his friends. But nonetheless, he is still a prisoner in Caesarea for two years after having spent a couple of nights uh, as a prisoner in Jerusalem before they they moved him. And so that's, that's the story of Paul. We're going to continue with that story and find out what happens next to him in his imprisonment in Acts 25 tomorrow. And we'll see you there. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.